Okay. Three, two, one. This is your resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, with another Positive Parenting with Astrology video. Today we're talking about Capricorn Moon Children. And before we begin, please like this video, hit subscribe to my channel for to get your free regular parenting with astrology content. So we're talking today about Capricorn Moon Children. So before we start, I recommend that you go back if you haven't reviewed it already and watch my video on Capricorn Sun Children. A lot of those tips will apply to Capricorn Moon Children. Capricorn Moon Placement is a little more challenging and we'll go into why that is. So the moon, as we know, rules your emotional life. It rules the chart holders, um, how, how they deal with their emotions, what they need to recharge their batteries, to, um, to feel emotionally fulfilled, how they subconsciously respond to anything touching on their emotions. So it, the moon is a very, it's a very emotionally powerful mechanism, right? It rules the chart holders, private emotional life, largely the family household life, also has to do with relationships. So when the moon is in a very private stoic sign like Capricorn, it's a challenging placement. The moon is said to be in detriment when it's in Capricorn. Uh, the moon is technically ruled by Cancer and Capricorn is the opposite sign to Cancer. So that's why in astrology, we say the moon is in detriment when it's in Capricorn, which is another way of saying it is a challenging placement. So bear that in mind when you're dealing with your Capricorn moon child that they have emotions, they are just very private. These people are not always comfortable with showing or expressing emotion because Capricorn is a stoic, dutiful, responsible, serious sign. And it, it, they find it very hard to be vulnerable. So they're not always comfortable talking about or showing any emotion. So one of your jobs as the parent is to let these children know that you accept them exactly as they are their, their stoicism, their um, private nature. Do not criticize them for lacking feeling. Do not tell them you have no feelings. We've talked about this in other videos. If you want a Capricorn moon child to open up to you, criticizing them for not opening up to you is not the way to do that. So bear that in mind, you ex accept them exactly as they are, stoicism and all. Okay, uh, you need to help them express their emotions in a healthy way, talk about them in a healthy way consistent with their nature. And we're gonna get into uh, how to do that, um, some ways that we've talked about on several other videos on this channel. So as we said, they're very stoic. Capricorn moon children tend to hide their emotions. They are the type to be strong for everyone else. Capricorn moon placement is kind of the fixer and problem solver of the zodiac. They are, it's a cardinal sign, it's an earth sign. So cardinal means they're always intent on moving forward, on progress, on achievement, on getting things done. That's what Capricorn is about in cardinal energy is about getting things done. So earth sign means they tend to be very grounded, right? In, in, in opposition to air as compared to air, very scattered, right? Capricorn and other earth play, placements are very grounded. Capricorn moon people tend to do the grounding for their loved ones. They tend to kind of be the problem solver and the safe space for a lot of their loved ones who may not have as much earth in their charts. And that can lead them to be uh, kind of to burn out because they're so used to being the problem solver and the uh, fixer of the Zodiac. Capricorn moon placement is very results oriented. They wanna get things done. Okay, so um, As compared to fire moons, it's a very different energy. Fire moon, Sagittarius moon, Aries moon, those placements make the child very demonstrative with all their emotions. If they are sad, you will know. If they are angry, the parent will know. If they are happy, ecstatic, you will know. Capricorn moon placement is much harder to read. So you will have to create the safe space, do a, do a, a better job of creating the safe space for the child so they will naturally open up to you in their own time. So I've talked about astrologer Stephen Arroyo before on this channel, it's one of my favorite astrologers. He has a lot to say about uh, relationships. So I advise you to go read uh, his books on um, astrological placements and relationships. So he says about Capricorn Moon, 
that it's a placement that prides itself on not revealing any sign of vulnerability or personal need. This is true. I have a Capricorn moon myself. It's taken me a long time to learn how to deal with that challenge. It is a placement that makes the person, it makes it really difficult for the person to show any vulnerability, even with the people closest to them. And that can be a huge issue because to have fulfilling personal relationships as a child with your friends and later as an adult with friends, partners, other things, to have those romantic relationships and to have that uh, you know deep level of true intimacy, you need to show some vulnerability. And if you're familiar with Brene Brown and her work, she talks a lot about this and about vulnerability. And if you haven't watched her videos and read her books, I highly recommend that you do. So again, as the parent, one of your jobs, if you have a Capricorn moon child, is to make them feel comfortable with their nature and also to help them deal with their emotions in a way that's consistent with their nature. Don't push them to speak about emotions, but make sure that they are comfortable talking to you, the parent, about anything on, on their mind. And there are two main ways that we've talked about before in other videos to do that. One is you spend pressure-free one-on-one time with the child where you're just hanging out or occupying the same space where there's no pressure to do anything, where there's no pressure to talk, right? That's a way you bond with the child. The second thing is when the child does open up to you, do not overreact emotionally, do not react with judgment, do not criticize, even if they tell you something that you find unpleasant or unsavory or you consider bad, do not emotionally overreact. Listen to them first, listen, and then you can respond to them in a judgment-free way. When you do those things repeatedly, the child knows that you are a safe person to open up to and they will naturally open up to you in their own time. So those are, um, that's how you do that. Another big characteristic of Capricorn moon children, I hear this all the time. People said it, adults said it about me when I was a child all the time. They're serious. They are kind of old beyond their years, uh, mature beyond their years. Um, so you wanna be careful about telling them to lighten up. You, you, don't wanna, you don't want to say this in a way that they perceive to be critical, right? Or where you're, you're um, bashing their nature. You don't wanna tell them, oh, you need to, op to lighten up more. You need to have more fun or you shouldn't be so serious. If it's a placement that is just naturally going to be serious, don't tell them not to be serious. Help them have fun. But the way to do that is you take them out to do things that are fun until you find things that the child finds fun. And then you do those things, right? What are your, the way I see, one of the ways I see parenting is you, you introduce your child to the world and you introduce them to all these different activities and everything the world has to offer. And then you kind of step back and let the child select what they like to do and kind of their life path. But your job is kind of to introduce them to all those things without pressuring them to do any one thing, if that makes sense. Okay, so even as young children, Capricorn Moon kids are very dutiful and very loyal and very capable, and very determined. So Capricorn, the symbol of Capricorn is the goat, right? So picture the goat slowly and methodically climbing the mountain to get to the summit. They take a long time to do that, but they're very determined getting to the top. That's, that's a very good description of Capricorn energy in general and the Capricorn moon placement too. So another thing that astrologer Stephen Arroyo says is that this placement tends to give the chart holder kind of this quote, aura of melancholy, unquote. It is a placement that tends to be a little pessimistic. So again, don't criticize your Capricorn moon child for being pessimistic. Why are you always so pessimistic? Why don't you blow? That's how they are. You can balance that energy with more positive energy, but don't criticize them. It's, it's, a, it's a sign that naturally is kind of pessimistic, but that trait generally relaxes over time. That kind of aura of melancholy Stephen Arroyo talks about relaxes over time as they get older and they get a little less anxious. So don't be too harsh on them about that or if they, if they tend to be pessimistic. Okay. So uh, what else? We said it's a very dutiful and loyal sign. Capricorn moon kids are extremely responsible and loyal and have a strong sense of duty toward their people, their tribe, their family. These kids are very comfortable 
taking on a responsibility. And they may not even complain about the responsibility. It makes them feel important. It makes them feel good. One thing that uh, is associated with Capricorn energy is this idea of status. Less so with the Capricorn moon placement. It's more Capricorn sun issue where they like to have status in society. Capricorn moon is a little less concerned with status, but they, they, they do the Capricorn moon kids when they have get responsibility and feel like it makes them feel important and it makes them feel good. So they, they like to be needed. Okay, so this, when they take on their responsibility at home or at school or wherever, it also may be tied to their sense of self-worth and you wanna be careful about that as the parent. You, you do not want to suggest that the child's worth is linked to the amount of help they give you at home or their achievements at school. Person, human beings are worthy because they are worthy full stop, right? So you wanna be careful that you, you don't suggest to the child that their worth is linked to status or achievement or how many chores they do at home, okay? So be, be careful about that. It may happen that, um, okay, so we said that, we said that, right. So it may happen that, because when you're parenting, often you're mired in kind of the day-to-day -day stuff and it's hard to take, take a step back and detach and look at things kind of from a you know, 100 foot view. So it may happen that the child takes on all this responsibility and you see as a parent, you see, oh, they're fine doing all this and this and this and this and this. And you give them more and more responsibility and more and more duties and you're burdening the child. So you need to be careful about giving the child, the Capricorn moon child too many burdens and too many responsibilities that are not commensurate with their age and maturity level. We're gonna talk about some examples. So of course, kids should always help at home, but you wanna make sure that, that the duties and responsibilities and chores you're assigning are always appropriate for their age and maturity level, okay? So um, the family unit's a team, you help each other, right? You don't help because um, you get something out of it. It's not a quid pro quo situation. You help the team because you're a team unit and you all help each other. Okay. So, and the, this is something I mentioned in my Capricorn, my video on Capricorn son children, that there's always a risk with Capricorn kids where they're parentified because they are so mature and they're, so, they appear to be so wise and old beyond their years and serious there's almost always a risk of being parentified where the parent treats the child as if the child were the parent, right? So you don't wanna do that, obviously. It's not a healthy emotional dynamic for a child to take on adult level responsibilities. So the Capricorn moon people are very much at home in that role of helper, provider, problem solver, fixer. So, or even home organizer protector too, they were protective of their tribe. So you wanna make sure that that the duties they're taking on, the responsibilities they're taking on are all appropriate for their age. And you definitely wanna give them responsibility because that helps their self-worth, their self-confidence and leads them to become independent uh, adults, which is one of our main goals when we're raising kids. So uh, another, a few other things, um, Capricorn moon placement, these kids tend to have a very few close friends. It's not kind of like, like fire signs tend to be friends with everybody and Pisces people love everybody. Capricorn people tend to have, especially the Capricorn moon people tend to have only a few close friendships. That's normal. So you would expect that from your Capricorn moon child. Capricorn moon placement, they're very planning, very calculating. They like to plan ahead. They're not as comfortable with spontaneous uh, activities or last minute change of plans. So if your Capricorn moon child shows some irritation when you change plans last minute, please do not take it personally. It's harder for them to deal with. So just recognize that. Okay. So we talked about making sure as a parent that the responsibility you're giving your Capricorn moon child is appropriate for their age. Okay. So obviously Appropriate duties and responsibilities would be older kids can set the table, they can feed and uh, walk the pets, they can help with laundry, they can straighten up the room, they can help you grocery shop, they can uh, take um, you know groceries from the car into the house. 
They can obviously be responsible for their own schoolwork. Capricorn moon kids love to be in charge of themselves. It's very independent. That part makes parenting them a little easier because they already want to be independent. So you're encouraging them to be more independent when you give them a little more responsibility and they'll rise to the challenge because they like to be in charge of themselves. For example, a Capricorn moon child would probably like walking you know, by himself or herself to school by themselves because it makes them feel important. Like I can do this on my own, right? So those are all examples of kind of appropriate levels of responsibilities. Inappropriate responsibilities where you're giving the child too much adult level responsibility is for example, if you made a child responsible for waking the parents up to go to work in the morning, that's really not appropriate. It's not the child's responsibility to make sure that the adults get to work on time. That's happened with us because I'm a night owl, not a morning person, and it has happened that my son woke up at, what, at the hour he was supposed to, and he waited for me to get up, and I got up like an hour late, and he told me later, I'm sorry, I should have looked at the time, and I should have woken you up, and I told him it is not your responsibility to make sure that the adults wake up on time, <laughs> and it's the adult's responsibility. So that's an, an example of putting too much adult level responsibility on the child. Uh, another thing, I, you know, it's, it's not appropriate to, for example, make a child responsible for making sure there's food in the house. Maybe if they're a teenager, that may be more appropriate, but having an eight, nine, 10 year old responsible for making sure there's enough food in the house kind of skirts the line of not being appropriate. It's, it's, that's a little bit too, too much like adult level stuff that, that may make the kid anxious that, oh my God, there's not enough food in the house and it's my fault that there's not enough food in the house. That's something else you want to be very careful about with Capricorn Moon children is when they take on that responsibility, they also will uh, take on the fault or the blame for failing to meet the responsibility. And if the responsibility is not age and mature maturity appropriate, that's really not a healthy dynamic you're setting up for the child. Something else, uh, you know, you would not ask it like an eight or nine year old or any older child really what the family should spend their limited money on. If you said, for example, and I've heard of examples of this, well, we only have so much money to go around this month. We can't pay our bills. What do you suggest we spend the money on? You, you should not ask a child what you should spend the family's limited budget on if there's not enough money to pay all the bills. That's giving the child too much adult level responsibility. Those are decisions for the adults to make. As kids get older, they can have more say in what happens to them, but that's, that's really not appropriate in my opinion. What else? Um, also be very careful about talking to these children about adult topics such as finances, financial hardships, economic hardships, serious illness, because Capricorn moon kids, as we said, will likely feel responsible for these family related problems because they're so dutiful and loyal to the family. And they may think that they are at fault for them. You want to be very careful about talking to them about adult issues too much or at all. Okay. On the other hand, we said that Capricorn moon kids are very independent. They like to be in charge of themselves, very capable. So you don't, on the other extreme, you don't want to make them feel helpless. You don't want to helicopter them and uh, oversee everything they do, oversee their schoolwork and oversee that they're brushing their teeth. So there are different extremes here, right? One is giving them too much adult level responsibility where they burn out and they feel at fault, right? When uh, the responsibilities are not fully met. And the other extreme is helicoptering the child and not letting them have any autonomy. So you don't want to do that either. So it's always a balance, right? Okay, so obviously we said older Capricorn moon children, older children in general can handle their own schoolwork, can organize their own rooms, lay their clothes out, things like that. So you want to give them as much autonomy regarding that stuff as you can, right? Um, and don't be afraid to ask these kids for help, age appropriate help. Hey, can you make me a sandwich? Can you please water the plants? Can you please feed the dogs? Can you please put the laundry in the dryer? Again, don't feel like they can't do anything. It's good for them to do these tasks at home. It boosts their self-confidence. It helps strengthen the idea of the family as a, as a team unit. You just wanna make sure that all the tasks they're doing, that one, they're appropriate to their age and maturity level, and two, that you're not overburdening the child with all these things. Okay, 
That's the trick to make sure the kids get enough responsibility and independence to grow up into healthy adults, but that they don't become so overwhelmed and burdened and burned out with the adult level responsibility. And I know from experience that Capricorn moon children can get burned out and overwhelmed by adult level responsibility. If the adults don't think about, is this appropriate to have this child responsible for X thing, right? Or is it appropriate to talk to the child about X topic? So parents always gotta be thinking about that, right? Okay, a couple more things and we'll wrap up. Uh, one thing that's always associated with Capricorn energy is this dry, sarcastic sense of humor. I have it, uh, almost every Capricorn uh, sun or moon person that I know has it. That's kind of how they are. Uh, if your child has that sense of humor and it's not your cup of tea, let them be about it. That's how they are, right? Accept that. I'm glad you find that funny. Oh, I'm glad you find humor in that. That's what you say to them. Um, the last thing I want to mention, and I'm always hesitant to put this on a parent's radar because it is never a good idea to diagnose any physical or mental condition from a birth chart. It's, it's irresponsible. You don't want to do that. I will say that because a Capricorn moon placement is so challenging because of the nature of the moon that we talked about and the nature of Capricorn energy, it is a placement that may be prone to feeling down once in a while. So that's something that can play out with the pessimism we talked about. So if your child is in a bad mood once in a while, remember we've talked on other videos that children come out of their bad moods pretty easily. Generally they come out of their bad moods pretty easily and on their own. So just let them be in a bad mood. If they're in a bad mood, they feel like sulking for a few minutes, let them be about it. You can ask them, can I do anything for you? Would you like to be alone? Or would you like me to sit with you? Oh, you wanna be alone? That's okay. Just let me know if you need anything. And let them, let them be, okay? Kids, older kids usually come out of their bad moods on their own and they need to learn how to do that. That's a life skill because they'll grow up into adults, move out, you won't always be there, right? To cheer them up and uh, you want them to learn to deal with all their emotions on their own, right? So that's Capricorn Moon, the Capricorn Moon placement in a nutshell. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Can be a challenging placement. It's also a placement that, that fosters a lot of loyalty and closeness with the parents. So that's always a good thing, okay? All right, so that's it. We will be back next week with another video and have a great week.